even though she left us freshman year to have a baby, the decision to have this woman as our class speaker was unanimous. I think I can speak for all of my classmates when I say that this woman is an inspiration to all of us. I could talk about the countless ways she's inspired us as students, but then I'd be standing here all night. More importantly, though, is how she inspired us all to be better people. She taught us to never be afraid of our own opinion, even if it's not the popular one. She reminded us senior girls to always value and respect ourselves, our bodies, and our minds. Most importantly, she showed us the importance of doing what you love. You can be a great parent, have a full-time job, and still have time to pour your, out through po pour your heart out through poetry every Tuesday night. And by the way, she might, we might even hear one tonight. To me, and I'm sure most of my classmates, she is more than a teacher. I knew her room was always open and that I could tell her anything without the fear of being judged, ridiculed, or exposed. She was someone I could trust and a woman I've looked up to and modeled myself after for the past three years. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like next year without her daily guidance, advice, and snarky comments. I always loved when she would get up from her desk as we were talking and shut her door because I knew things would be said that would never leave that room. Our class speaker this year is not just someone we kind of liked. She is someone we dearly loved, someone who inspires us to be our best selves, someone you can really look up to. On behalf of my fellow classmates, I'd like to welcome Ms. Tara Bernier up to the podium to speak to the class of 2015. Dear audience, Potter. Pardon me for one second while I adjust myself because this part of commencement exercises is called the address to the graduates, so I must address you. I am honored and pleased to be before you today. What your parents and friends and family and trustees, school committee, administration, and the faculty might not know is most of us, all but five, just got to know each other last year. And as I promised I would, I'm saying it now, instead of teaching ninth grade, as Michaela likes to remind me on occasion, or perhaps Avery on class night, and now Sydney here at graduation, instead of teaching ninth grade to you all, I had the crazy audacity to stay home with my newborn son and toddler child, instead of nurturing you through your first year in high school. So on the first day of school last fall, when you all rolled into B and G period English, we were just getting to know each other. So again, I am flattered that you have asked me to be your speaker on this evening. And the thing is, I've been going nuts over, okay, I've been thinking about the words I have to say. And like you, with so many of your assignments, I've had plenty of prep time to get this speech done. But like you, with so many of your assignments, the words all came last minute. And it's overwhelming, you know, to impart on you some nugget of information, some crazy good advice, something wise. And let's be honest, to keep it all short. So no one shifts too uncomfortably in their seats. Oh, and the other thing, while we're being honest, over two years' time, class of 2013, I've not been skimpy with my stories. You've heard about my misadventures and piteous overthrows, heard about my success and my blows, so what new could I give you today? And Wednesday night, while I was taking down vast cups of coffee, working out the edges of the speech, I fell asleep. And no, this is no poetic allegory to set up some story of graduation wisdom. Okay, it is some poetic allegory to set up some story of graduation wisdom, but I fell asleep all the same, and while I lay there in sad piles of drool and commencement wisdom up to my elbows and 32 drafts, Queen Mab visited me. Seriously. I know you want to think I'm full of it here, but I'm telling you when there are only 48 hours left to give one of the most important speeches you have given, the Queen is known to come by. Queen Mab, for those of you who didn't have the pleasure of my ninth grade English class or Miss Romeo and Juliet all together, is the Queen of the Fairies and the keeper of dreams. And she, well, she hang out with me on Wednesday night. And get this, she came dressed in yellow and blue, little hawk wings instead of those gossamer ones you would expect. Super fandom hadn't passed her by. 
And while any of my current or former students in the room know that they are smack dab in the middle of a Ms. B story, may I assure the rest of the audience that this, I promise, is going somewhere. So she looked up at me in her golden hawk's getup and piped up, well, well what? Well, what do you need? You get three wishes. And I implored, but I need 41. 41 wishes? Are you for real? I looked at her and smiled and, at least, and said, at least I didn't ask for infinite wishes. She tapped her little foot. So I, do I get 41? And she nodded. See, I need 41 wishes to hand out to this class, she whispered, quick, before I change my mind. And that's all I needed to start rattling off. I wish that, I wish that, I wish they can show kindness like Emma B does and enjoy their friends as much as Jessalyn does. That they will be able to write like Becky can and devour a book like Alex can. May they be clever, clever like Tim and know how to make a crowd smile like Olivia. When faced with a crisis, may they be the Samaritan that Corey is capable of. I wish that they will fight injustice like David and be the kind of loyal that Mercedes is. May they seek adventure like Damien, seek laughs like Adam, and maybe even hit a grand slam one day like Ethan. May they bake delicious treats like John and look as good in a Betty Crocker apron as Nick. May they try something new and realize they enjoy it like Allie B. Or write the occasional love poem as Liz has been known to do. May they be tender hearted like Celeste have as much patience as Greg, and be as much of an early bird as Lonnie. May they find devotion like Anne, and conviction like Chase. And teach us that quiet and calm doesn't have to compete with the outrageous like Jonky has. May they be able to work as hard as Ileana does, but at the end of the day, know they should dance as hard as she does too. May they teach us that everyone doesn't have to fit in some constructed box like Laurel has. May they be willing to travel far to seek what you want, my Cassidy and willing to help a friend in need like Amanda is. May they love music as much as Satchel and find joy like Kelsey knows how to. May they quietly lead like Kayla and find a sweet and a funny friend as Katie Kay. May they face adversity head on like Emma Hudgick has and be the kind of idealist that Karis is. May they be brave enough to laugh out loud like Michaela can and show us that toughness comes in small packages like Sydney Connor. May they be on it and as organized and as driven as Avery and as diligent as Aliel. May they dream big like Andrea and not only manage but see through a project like Sydney D. May they show the kind of dedication and leadership that it takes to reach your goal as Sean has. And may they be able to capture a moment in a photogra photograph like Catherine can. See, for the class of 2013, I only wish the best of each of you. Queen Mab gave me one more tiny tap of her foot and smiled. I'll see what I can do. And as morning crept into my room and I pushed the night's dreams from my eyes, I heard her say in a far off voice, once the accolades are done, don't forget the wisdom and advice. Oh man, the wisdom and advice. I pushed the strewn papers aside to see what I could do, perhaps fashion out a list of 10 pieces of commencement wisdom. See, the thing about advice and wisdom is that it won't always be bright and cheery, won't always be new, and maybe won't always be wise, but it will be carved out just for you. So a list of 10 in which I purport to be wise. 10, listen to other people's music as that is how you will find the quickest path to their heart and see as much live music as you can because just as Valvaldi knew, be it a funky groove in a dark club or hip hop in a stadium, music in all its forms can be as good as church. Be a good roommate, don't eat their food, remember to flush the toilet, and goodness, wash your own darn dishes. Eight, entitlement ends here. As of this moment, you are entitled to nothing. We, your parents, the world owes you nothing. If you give, give of yourselves, just because, not because you will get anything in return. Seven, don't lie. You'll get caught, and then everyone will know you're a liar. Be not a Barry Bonds. Be better than that. Be brave, six. Just be brave, because five, the universe doesn't care about you. It is too vast and too wide, and you are too small. So why don't do something epic? 
because there's a good chance that epic thing will be the best thing you ever do. And if you fail, so what? Failure makes for good poetry. Four, and speaking of failure, you're gonna make some terrible choices. You will choose the wrong path. And the hangover from, them, from those bad choices will be worse than anything you choose or choose not to get yourself into in the next four years. But here's the thing. Bad choices don't make you a bad person. They just mean you still have something to learn. Let me assure you that at 36, I'm still learning aside you all every day. Three, love big enough to get your heart broken often. It will hurt and you will wanna stay in bed for a week, maybe three. Call me, I'll send you chocolate. <laughs> and I will tell you that as cliche, cliche as it is about to sound, your heart will heal and will survive and as it's wont to do, the sun will rise again. Two, be kind. Please, just be kind. Think about other people's feelings, tread lightly on their hearts, smile more, snark less, open your arms wide, hold the world close, I promise it will be good for you. And one, sorry, this is the long one, be not a John Mayer song. You know the one I'm talking about, that waiting for the world to change one? I don't care what kind of lovely guitar riff you put that to. You can't tell me that someday our generation is gonna rule the population so we keep on waiting for the world to change? Have we really become the most disaffected cohort ever? No great frontier, no American dream, no rugged individualism. No, we're just gonna wait because that's what the founding fathers did, right? Just chilled in pubs waiting for a stop to taxation without representation, tyranny from afar, monarchy without end. Just waited for it to stop. And then they wrote a song and set it to Fife music. <laughs> the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Bends, said Martin Luther King. Bends with the weight from people who push on it, jump on it, who beat the heck out of it. People who make it okay to remind you, my students, that this is not a post-feminist, post-racial anything. This world, I tell you, I've told you will not wait for you to change it. You will have to be active and bold and you have to be body and outspoken. You will have to be moral and true and you cannot listen to John Mayer. Instead, listen to Bob, Marley or Dylan, to Billy's blues, to the audacious angst of Janice or the howl of the Beastie Boys till you know that no one waits, not for love, not for the next chance and most certainly not for the world to change. So dear class of 2013, do not go quietly into that real world. As if life inside these brick walls has not been real enough. Be better versions of your now selves. In the next version of the real world, be braver, be kinder, be more open-hearted. Make us the kind of proud we're, we've been hoping for, the kind of proud that 349 years of Hopkins history demands. And when you do, Come darken my doorway, our doorways, once in a while, so I, so we can hear your tales of greatness, so I, so we can tell you how impressed we are with you, with the adults you have become. Thank you.